Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches Middle School Math Survival Guide. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. Today, I'm going to be going over 6th grade mathematics pre-assessment video 2 of 3. What is math? Wait a minute. I've already gone over this. Let's just give you the quick and easy version of this. As a teacher, this is what I would say a mathematics pre-assessment and why it's given. A mathematics pre-assessment is a test that helps the teacher, me, see who needs help and who is at grade level. All right, all right, all right. Let's start with number one. Let's solve this problem. So we have two fractions, k over 6 is equal to 15 over 18. We can go through and do the cross multiply here like this, you know, and it's going to be 18k equals 6 times 15. So I'm just going to put 6 times 15. All right. We can do it that way. Let's take and then divide it and all this other stuff. But hold on a sec. Let's look at this again. Before I even get into this here, I want to do k over 6 is equal to 15 over 18. I know that I can reduce this here because there's a common factor. And that's going to be, so 15 and 18 has 3 in it. So I can say, well, I'm going to divide each side by 3. So I'm going to just do divide by 3 here and divide by 3. 3 here. And that's going to give me k over 6 is equal to, so what's 15 divided by 3? And that's going to be equal to 5. And 18 divided by 3 is going to be 6. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. All I can do is just multiply both sides by 6. So I'm going to say 6. Let's put a dot there times that. And 5 times 6. And these are going to cancel out. And instantly I have k is equal to 5. See how quick that was? Much faster than going, okay, what's 16, 6 times 15? You know, what is that going to be? Was it 30, 60, 75, right? Because I'm, that's 6 times 15. Divide, and then I divide that by 18, and I'm going to figure that out. It's like, forget that. Here we go. K equals 5. That's our answer. That was easy peasy quick. One of the things that you have to understand is that knowing your multiplication tables and understanding the reciprocal of that where I can divide 15 by 3 and understand what that is, quickly it gets me through to the answer fast. Let's look at number 2. It says solve the problem. 2 sevenths is equal to C over 28. Similar thing here. I can multiply each side by 7. So let's just do that. Let's just do 7 times that and 7 times this first. So I'm going to say that's going to be 2 is equal to C over 4. And then I just multiply each side by 4. This crosses out. So 4 times 2 is equal to 8, which is equal to C. And that's one of my answers right here. Let's get into some geometry. And let's look at number 3. It reads here, a part of a line with two endpoints. Well, what is a line? Well, right here, this is a line. There's my line. An angle. Well, an angle is like this. A ray. I have an endpoint. There's my ray, and then a line segment, a point there, a point there, A and B. So this is a part of a line, so I'm going to make sure that this is going here. So there's a part of a line, it has two endpoints right there and right there, so that's going to be my line segment. Having the ability to draw out everything, or just know in your head what it all looks like, is going to help you working it out and remembering this academic language. Number four, the green outline is an example of what? Well, here's this green outline. So I have this point here, it's coming out here, went out here. Is it a line? I'm gonna look over here. Nope, is it an angle? Oh, it's an angle, because that looks similar to this. It's definitely not a ray. Now, if I didn't have this part here, this could be a ray right here. Is it a line segment? No. It's definitely an angle. We're going to continue on with some geometry. So I have number three. A polygon has to have what? Two sides? No, well, four or more sides. Oh, well, there's a four sides. and that, that is a polygon. No sides, so it can't be that. It can't be this because it's not closed. At least three sides. It has to be at least three sides. See, all I did was just draw pictures. To number four. Which shape doesn't belong with the others? Let's take a look at these. These are our, we have a square, so I have a square right here. This is A. B is the rectangle. This is B. C is the trapezoid. And D is the rhombus. Now, what's different? Well, this has one, two sides. These are parallel. Those are parallel. Square, I have 
two sets of parallel lines there. Rhombus, same thing, parallel sides. And look at this. There's, this is my rhombus. And those are not parallel sides, so it's going to be rhombus. So I went through and I evaluated it, and I knew what they were. I just labeled them all and said, okay, what's the difference? And I had that inkling of like, oh, wait a minute, what are they looking for? What What is different between all of these? And, and I can see parallel, 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 parallel. See how I'm doing this? There's these parallel lines and such. So when those lines are parallel, they are similar, but here, these are non-parallel lines if I extend it out, our sides. Continuing on with some geometry, how many vertices are in this shape? Well, what is a vertice? Well, a vertice is where uh, two or more lines intersect. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There we go. I have to just count them up. That's all I needed to do. Number six, name the 3D shape. What does that mean? Well, what I can see here, it looks like it is some sort of object that has, this is like be side one, side two, side three, side four, and this is end one. So I'm going to say end one and end two. And what I can do is I can say, well, if I fold it up, what is it going to look like? Well, it's going to look something like this. And I'm going to make it off just a little bit here just so we can get a perspective on this aha so it's probably going to give me something that's uh, it's not a, it's not a cube because these are rectangles right here is it a rectangular pyramid no because that's going to be something like this that can't be it a triangular prism again just draw out the picture how is it going to look Attach that it should be there so nope triangular pyramid well if it's not a rectangular pyramid it's definitely not a triangular pyramid rectangular prism so eliminate the possibilities draw the pictures to figure out how to answer this question if you're not able to just go rectangular prism I looked at it and I said it's a rectangular prism but I have years of experience you on the other hand may need to draw the pictures so learn how to draw these pictures of these 3d shapes now we're into some algebra number seven Every bicycle is charged $1.50 to ride the train. Write the equation for the total charges Y if there are X number of bikes. Label the axis of the graph, complete the table, then plot the points from the table onto the graph. This is my table. Here's my graph. X number of bikes. So this is bikes. So that's going in the X direction. So I'm going to say bikes. And here, this is the charge. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to put down CH as for the charge. If I have two bicycles, it's going to cost me $3. Okay, so $3. If I have five bicycles, how much is that? Well, two and two, there's four that bicycles. That's going to be $6 plus another dollar fifty because that's going to be five bikes. It's going to be $7.50. And then eight. Well, I know that two and two, which is going to be four, is six. So four bikes times two at six, so two times six is 12. So that's gonna give me $12. And you may be going, well, wait a minute. There's not like 12 lines. Well, what I can do is label this as going two, four, say six here, eight, 10. And then that's gonna be 12 right here. Let's look at the first one, two. I don't have enough. So I'm gonna say this is two bikes right here. And I'm gonna go up $3, but wait a minute. So two, that's going to be four. It's going to be right in the middle. So there's my, there's that. Here. Okay. And I can say this is A. A here. So I have five bikes. So one, no, it's actually two, four, five isn't right in between. So I'm going to put down five right here. Now I have $7.50, which is going to be two, four, six, and then seven fifty is going to be right about here. So I'm going to do B and then eight. I have eight bikes. Two, four, six, eight is going to be right here. That's eight. And I'm going to go up $12. Two, four, six, eight, ten. There's 12. I come across and there's going to be my C. So this is B and C. So I just plotted those points. I have my table here. I put down this is bikes, bikes, 
and this is how what the charge is going to be. Let's look at number 8. So I have 3 parentheses 4y minus 2 is equal to what? I'm looking for something else here, and I need to multiply through this. So this, so 3 times 4 is 12. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Take that one out. Take that one out. Y. I got that. Y, Y. Minus 6. It's minus 6. There it is. I use the distributive property of multiplication to take this 3 and multiply it through what's inside the parentheses, and that's how we got 12y minus 6. Number 9. A number y is 4 times greater than 3 added to a number. Write an expression for y in terms of x. If x is equal to 4, what is y? So this is a multi-step problem here. Well, first off, you have to understand what you're reading. A number y is 4 times. So, so y is four times greater than three added to a number x. So four times three plus x. So we have to use the distributive property multiplication to figure this out. So y, so four times three is, tw is equal to 12 plus four x. And now I've done that, I have to say, well, wait a minute, I have to plug in if x is equal to 4, so I just put write this down, y is equal to 12 plus 4 times x, which is 4. So keep on going, 12 and 4 times 4 is 16. Added it all up, so that's going to give me 28. Because 12 plus 16 is 28. So now we have this other problem here, number 10 y is equal to 1 half x plus 2 and 2 eighths. Now this can be a little confusing because you can say, well, this looks like a mixed number here, but actually it isn't. It's, this is actually 1 half times x. This right here is not 2 times 2 eighths. It is a mixed fraction. We can write this out and say, it says, what is y if x is equal to 7? We'll just plug all that in. So y is equal to 1 half and that's 7. So I'm going to put 7 here because we show that we're multiplying by it plus 2 and 2 eighths. Again, that's that mixed number. I can look at this and go, okay, well, wait a minute. I can say this is equal to 7 halves because when I multiply, I multiply the numerators and I multiply the denominators. And in essence, just the whole number 7 is can also be written as a fraction of the number as the 7 as the numerator over the denominator of 1, because that's just 7. So I am going to have 7 halves plus 2 and 2 eighths. I'm going, oh my goodness, what do I need to do here? Just to keep things rolling, let's make it a little bit, I'm going to say simplified. I can simplify this, and I can just say this is actually going to be, I have 2 goes in there one time, and this goes in here. Four. I did not have to do that. I just I could have had everything as eights, but I wanted to make it so that it's two and one fourth. So this is going to be equal to, and I want to have the same denominator here. So I have to multiply the top and bottom here by two. Do more little dots there, so we know that. So two times seven is fourteen, and then I have two times two is four, plus two and one fourth. Now I'm just adding fractions right now. So I can say, well, this is going to be 2 and 14 fourths plus 1 fourth. That's going to be 15 fourths. But wait, I need to simplify this. I, I don't want to have this improper fraction here. I'm like, okay, well, 4 times 4 is 16, but that's one too many here. So I have to say 4 times 3 is 12. So this is going to be 2 plus 3. Okay, so that's going to be 2 plus 3 is 5. And then I have to figure out the fraction. So look at look at this. I could just boom, boom, boom. I just eliminated all my answers except for 1. But let's continue on. So 15 minus 12 is equal to 3. So 5 and 3 fourths. If you have another way to do this, that's great. I think this was fairly straightforward and just step by step going through it. And again, I, I didn't even have to figure out 5 and 3 fourths because I know that this is the answer because this is the only one that has 5 as the uh, whole number here. That's it for today. And remember, if you need some help, 
go back to Mr. Woods Teaches. And here is the URL to get there. It's going to be going to my YouTube channel for kindergarten through eighth grade. And I want to say that it's going to be to where you can go over your fractions. You can understand the academic vocabulary. Do searches because I've tagged everything within my library there. So if you're looking at improper fractions, you can type in improper and it should take you right there to the videos that where it's working on that. And I hope you can find those answers that you need to be successful in middle school. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, if I make a mistake, sometimes I publish the mistake, I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to take the video down, or I catch it beforehand, but I save the mistake and I'll put it up on my TikTok. So you can go see me at Mr. Woods Teaches. Have a great day.